you, when you were guest judging the Fame Games Effigy Awards, you made a reference to somebody who jumped up on a chair during one of the songs and started playing air guitar. Was that Emma? <laughs> <laughs> I think you've got a live on Twitter or something at the moment. Yes, I think you have. Uh, Emma is actually a very, very fine air guitarist. There's no question about it. And I said to her before I left, I'd heard that in LA, I think this week, there's, there's the World Championships or something. Sure. Uh, and I said, why aren't you there? Because she's phenomenal. What are, what are her favorite Fame Game songs? Because she's much further removed than you. And I, I ask that because it's always interesting for me to find out from somebody totally perspective. She's from radio, but from Britain. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and Emma has an enormous, she's very, very knowledgeable about music. And this is mainly because her parents and listening to the 60s stuff that, that they played. And she has a fantastic uh, love of music crossing over. Her favorite is Queen and stuff like that. That's where she comes from. And, um, uh, and the Beatles and everything else. So, uh, but she goes back, you know, as far as I do. And she's a bit younger than me, but she still knows everything about who was around in that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the other part of the question? Who are her favorite Fame Games artists? Okay, well, I mean, it did start a little bit the same as it did for me in that, uh, and she picked it almost immediately with me, which was Stars Go Dim. Mm-hmm. Absolutely instant. And she absolutely adored me. know what track I'm talking well, those, about. Those are you? love yeah. songs, Tony. Well, they are love songs. <laughs> and, uh, they're love songs. Do, do, you, do you love each other to those songs? <laughs> That's a bit personal. Yeah, That's a bit personal. Well, you it know, personal, all the I'm ladies not... want to know because we know that you're a wanted man. I mean, all the people around here are flocking around and staring through windows as you walk by. <laughs> yes, there are some strange people peering through windows at me, actually, and they're, and they're not you. <laughs> Tony, I'm, I, I want to come back to you in a sort of convoluted kind of way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've read sort of uh, articles about the, the Cow family, and obviously Simon comes across as being a tough cookie, and it's, uh, sometimes, you know, he says some really hard-hitting stuff. But from what I've read and what I've heard, he's actually quite a nice guy. He's a softie. Well, look, you know, uh, of course Simon has a soft side, and um, fortunately, and I'm, I'm, I'm so pleased to be able to say this, that a lot of the stuff that he would say soft side, of course he's very generous by nature, Nature. And the things that he does that aren't publicised, um, in other words, going to Great Ormond Street Hospital to see some sick children, um, which he won't, he'll only go there without as long as a, fa- a camera crew's not there. Uh, and he does a lot backstage like that uh, and gives quite a lot of uh, money to various charities. But, you know, he won't talk about it and, he, and, he, and he'll only do it if it doesn't go in the press. The reason I said that and I said that I will bring it back to you is because uh, when we were talking last night, there was one thing you said, which I thought to myself, well, you know, kiss me suit. Apart from everything else, kiss me suit. Right. <laughs> apart, from, right. apart from everything else, which I thought, hold on, you know, here's a nice guy. You know, the, everything else you said was rubbish, but this particular <laughs> thing you said, I thought, here's a nice guy. Uh, because you said, you know, I said to you, why are you involved with Fame Games? And you said, well, as an author, having actually published the book, okay, I, I'm sort of there, and I thought to myself, well, I want to help other budding authors to actually come yeah. through. And your connection with us, with us mm. is obviously the same thing. It is. It you know, and this is how, um, of course, uh, DJ Crow and I met. Is about that whole. This is my ethos. Where I come from as a journalist, uh, I very quickly got into um, writing about famous authors uh, and um, doing book reviews and stuff for newspapers uh, in Britain. Uh, and um, suddenly, I started getting uh, manuscripts being sent to me from un- obviously unknown authors trying to break through. And uh, I started to then get interested in the, in how hard it is to get published. So there's an obvious link here to what you guys are doing and um, so I worked with a couple of new authors who sent me their book no publisher would touch and they'd self-published their book and um, well, one guy I got hold of was a guy called uh, Neil Shaw Larkman it was the first thing I ever did in taking on a book wholesale and trying to market what, what he did as a nobody because it was so tough and um, anyway the end of the story was I got him onto GMTV with his children's book called The Great London Adventure and the moment he went out on air the, in the following week he sold 50,000 copies. Wow. Now, you can argue this is all about marketing, but what was so brilliant to me was that I knew that, you know, if someone, if you know what you're doing marketing-wise, you can then, doesn't matter who they are, if they're a nobody, it doesn't mm. matter. It's about getting that guy on TV and, and the book sells. So that's where I come from. Um, so to me, I know how hard it is to get published. So 
naturally I also know how hard it is to get a record deal and uh, it's easy for me to say yes thousands of people going back to when Simon was doing a and uh, for, for a job that uh, people send in CDs uh, they don't get listened to the same as manuscripts being sent to a publisher that sit in the corner six foot high that nobody reads so I know how hard and that's the the link to, to you guys. I know that the indie artists appreciate so much every week on The Cowell Factor you give positive feedback, positive advice. Um, what do other people that you surround yourself with, maybe your agent or even Simon or your mom or Emma, what do they think of your work with Fame Games and independent artists from all around the world? Well, I mean, again, I mean, someone like Emma uh, uh, obviously understands why I do this and that I do it from the heart as well. And I always said right from the beginning of this, uh, particularly to you, DJ, that I would never, you know, I don't do what's Simon, I don't sort of give judgment out as such, and I won't do anything negative. So when I talk about mostly every week or every other week, I take a couple of Fame Games artists who I think are, uh, should be mentioned for various reasons. I'll only do the positive stuff. No, mm. of course I could be critical of people, couldn't I? Yeah. Very easily, and people will perhaps expect me to do it because of what my surname is, but sure. I won't ever do that. I only want to do positive things for these guys that I think deserve every help they can get. Well, and after all, they're struggling enough at the moment. Well, that's so, right. They so don't want a cowl down their neck. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We'll leave that for Simon to do on, on these TV shows, but it's not what I do. So do you ever talk to Simon about the work that you're doing with Fame Games? Yes, he says you're mad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But yes, I do. And uh, he knows what I'm doing. The thing is with Simon, as, as I've said to you before, DJ Kreiser, his whole, when you open up the doors to cowl world, it is a little bit mad in there. Mm. And Simon works these, he's no longer in a and as I keep on saying to you, said that, that you know, he runs a global entertainment business. And when he goes to bed in LA or Holland Park at uh, 11 or 12 o'clock at night, he then picks up the phone to, if he's in Holland Park, will the American calls start? And he'll then work till four or five in the morning. Um, so it's a full on day. And so there's very little time to get involved in other things, whether it's what I'm doing. But yes, to answer your question, of course, I talk about it. And, um, you know, he loves what I'm doing and loves what Fame Games is doing. Oh, excellent. What is a typical work week like for you? So we can get to know some of the other things that you're doing. Well, yeah, I mean, apart from what I do so well for, for, uh, for Fame Games. Beautifully, I, um, by the way. Beautifully. <laughs> um, I, I do this thing, I think uh, we spoke about this one before I started with it. I do a, a cow celebrity gossip, which I do for various American radio stations, which is me not just talking about the, the, the Simon talent shows in the world. It's about what's going on in Britain uh, with celebrities and when I say celebrities I mean royalty and when I say royalty I don't mean Simon again I mean you know because the Americans love to hear about what's going on with Prince William and stuff like that when we know there's a royal Uh, wedding about to happen in about 18 months yeah of course there is no way yes yes yes. oh so uh, and all that so I do off the market he was mine (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. (laughs) you like him don't you (laughs) but uh, so yeah so I do that and I do that into America I also do it for Australian radio and New Zealand radios and of course when it all exploded again um, a couple of months back was with the whole Susan Boyle show oh, explosion and so suddenly I was getting these people from New Zealand or Australian radio not wanting to talk to about Simon which was a, a pleasure mm. not to talk about him uh, they wanted to talk about Susan Boyle so I had to give all what my opinion on was that and that's my commentary is as I do for you guys it's about the whole world of fame about celebrity because as Simon said uh, way back in 2003 we live in a fame epidemic we don't do. uh, you know and we cut, it won't go away it just gets bigger and bigger and Susan Boyle was the you know the pinnacle of that the zenith really mm. of I'm how so, mad it's become I'm so glad you brought that up because in your Kyle Factor this last episode you you were paying tribute to uh, the late great Michael Jackson yeah, and you said something that was very, very clever, said something about alluding to the fact that it was drugs, the class A drug, fame. Yeah. And then last night at dinner you said Simon is terrified. Simon is terrified, you're terrified of some of the things that this class A drug fame can do in the instance of Susan Boyle yeah. and most most recently, just breaking in the news, um, an X Factor auditionist or auditionee who threatened to commit suicide because they rejected her. Yeah. And of course we had this in America with the girl who went outside yeah. at Abdul's house. So you know it's we're now kind of on to that and uh, of course 
someone like uh, my brother is, is absolutely terrified of that kind of thing happening. I just go back to the Susan Boyle thing again because it's well worth saying, and I might have done this on the Cal Factor, I can't remember, but I'm so glad that Susan Boyle has a Simon to look after her mm. because um, she needs, she could be with worse people than Simon, I can assure you. Yeah. Um, but.